welcome to the Vantage Point podcast, Organ. How do you feel? Yeah, <laughs> excited. I, I I didn't know that um that you have this podcast, and I'm excited to be in your channel because you, 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 you I used to invite you to be in my channel, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've not actually released an episode yet, so you won't have seen anything. I'm recording a few, and then I'm just gonna start posting consistent. That's the plan, anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, first of all, I just want to ask, how's life back in Thailand? It looks amazing out wow. there. Wow. Oh, yeah, the weather is amazing. Um, the people always smile, and our life is quite chilling, but a lot of um, social life. I mean, y- yeah. you're going out every night for this party, and then this concerts, and then this meeting. Is uh, I mean, I always cook at home, and when I'm in Thailand, it's so rare that I cook at home. I always eat out, always outside. Yeah. yeah. So life is good, but very busy. Let's say that. How does it compare uh, to Bangor, Bangor Uni? Bangor, I have time for myself. I feel I feel like yeah I have my social life and I have time for myself to like oh this is my priority this is what I want to do do things from for what I really want to do yeah work on yourself I, to be honest I yeah work on yourself like I like to do like doing YouTube telling people the story about my life and I feel yeah I can't I, I, as you see I've been stopped doing YouTube uh, since I'm back to Thailand because I have no time at all. The working life is really take take up all, all my time. I am a teacher, I'm an opera singer, I am a researcher, I am wife, <laughs> I am daughter, <laughs> so many things. Yeah. Each of those a full time job by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like super full time job. I really miss Banga so much. I miss cider. I miss scone. Oh my, I mean, so many yeah. things. Um, yeah. I want to ask, because um, I spent a bit of time in Asia last year, I went to the Philippines, and it's totally different yeah. out there. Um, I'm sure there's some similarities uh, with the Philippines and um, Thailand, just in the culture. And I want to ask you, um, what what do you notice about the differences between culture in, in Asia and in like Western countries like the UK? Because I noticed a lot of differences. What do you think yeah. of the main differences? Wow. The main one that I found is big thing is between the adults. We have to really respect the adults. And um, we can, we, we have to, for example, when I come back to Thailand, I starting to have, for example, uh, for my wedding, like my husband have to like have some dowry for my parents. Or when I started to work, I need to give them the milk money things right. like this it's shocking because i never really i know a little bit about it but when i i didn't live in thailand for almost 10 years when i come back i was like i mean i used to have everything for oh is it myself this is myself my partner but then when i come back to thailand I'm like oh for family family oh this family family you have to yeah, respect you know them a lot yeah it's so much different and i i'm a bit shocked like a bit culture shock yeah um but yeah and also uh food are uh, so much cheaper <laughs> when you eat out yeah and then but something very expensive for example milk when i'm when i'm in banga milk is cheaper when i'm in thailand milk cheese oh, really? oh yeah much cheaper I, I eat a lot of, of cheese when i'm in banga and milk but when i come back to thailand oh my god cheese is so expensive milk but maybe butter. it's because um maybe because there's more cow farms in the uk perhaps it's easier exactly. for them to get it. yeah yeah in thailand we don't have much cow that's why we are quite small because we don't really drink milk and 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 butter and i don't know if it's relevant but maybe maybe like, it's a protein source it's a protein source so maybe Maybe people grow less because of that. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Um, I don't know. It, I'm not sure. It's interesting you, you, what you say about respecting um, like the adults because, again, I was in the Philippines. I know it's uh, probably there's a lot of difference, differences between there and Thailand, but um, just one thing I noticed in the culture there was how they all respected like the elderly 
people and it was like the family's duty to look after the elderly people rather than you know over here we send them off to the old people's home and it's like bye bye <laughs> you know yes, i know I know exactly like we have to take care of them. I have to give them uh, 10% of my salary to my parents for them. Really? To, to, uh, yeah. Is that they like have, a rule or is that have, just something you do? It's something that people think that is normal. And for me, it's something like, really? Do, do I have to give you meal money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was shocked. And like, how much? how much should I give you it's like normally they give 10% so it's like it's like kind of like a, a culture rule in it and um yeah I, I even though my parents earn more than me because they earn um what's it called pension they earn pension yeah. both of them earn more than me because I just start the university and then I just still have to pay them 10% it's just for like a moral or something i don't know how to say yeah it, it's it's kind of nice it's nice in a way you know um yeah i i think yeah sorry i think because of like um even though we are older than 18 they still take care of us they still pay for us to go to the university but in your culture maybe when you're 18 they just like yeah get out get go get your life when you're 18 <laughs> yeah i guess we are oh our parents a bit like maybe we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for the things that were the values that were installed instilled in us when we were kids so perhaps anything we do achieve obviously this isn't going to be the same for everyone in every upbringing but uh, for a lot of people if their parents are supportive early on then maybe we do owe a bit of that to them later on yeah yeah that's also nice i i, I mean i in my opinion because i've been living in europe and then when when I want to give something for my parents, like for example, this month I earn quite well. I want to take them out. It's a mother days. I want to take them. I want to give them some, some money or some nice stuff. It, it's like for me, but it, it's have a good and bad. Of course, I want to give them something. But if if they are coming, okay, you you start to work. You have to give us ten percent. It's if, for me. That's why it's a bit shock. But well, I I I am now understand and then doing follow the culture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask as well. Uh, you've been traveling a lot in your Instagram bio. Yeah. You say you've been to fifty two countries. Is that true? Yes. No, it's 52. 52. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So why do you think it's important to travel? Wow. I think travel make me grown up, make me see so much things. Um, wow. Everything. It's make, make me who I am today to see so much things and, and compare the culture, what is good and what is not that good and, and, and make me make open my eyes and um yeah it's make me who i am now for example yeah. if i live in thailand all the time these things with at least 10 percent thing probably become a, a, something normal but but for me i i see you guys with your parents um i never see any any of my my uh british friend have to pay their par parents after they they um got a first job every salary 10 percent, something like that before uh only them like oh i want to give it to you or things like that i mean if i never go anywhere i would never see any of this something beautiful as well uh in every countries wow i don't know how to explain but experience yeah i think from um, travel. But probably perspective as well like I noticed, yeah. um, again, just from when I went to Asia last year, um, it was a very, uh, compared to in the UK, it's a very like poor community over there. But the people mm. were so much, seemed so much happier with having less, as in they, they're not complaining about the things we complain about in the UK. You know, people are so negative when they get this kind of mindset of, you know, we live in this kind of bubble and everything's got to be this way. Whereas if you travel around a bit, you see that actually people in different places in the world have it far worse off than you. And your problems are pretty trivial if you look at the bigger picture. And it can help you to put stuff in perspective and have a 
more enjoyment out of like the basic things that you take for granted yeah that's totally right wow wow glenn what do you say is perfect <laughs> it's amazing yeah. yeah it is it is like um when i was young i live in thailand uh since i was oh, until 20 something uh when i meet foreigner uh like like people from uh uh uk they say oh today is beautiful weather and i was like what he means you're like, you're like mate it's like this every day here what are you talking about <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I was not never know what is bad weather or what is good weather until I moved to to Bangka. So you went Sometimes. to Bangka, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I moved to Austria as well, I now know like it's dark all day and rainy all day. Oh, I got it now. That's the bad weather. And then with a the sunny, it's starting to have like become summer or spring. It's this is a good weather now. I understand. Oh, because Thailand, we always have good weather. Always. We, we never know what is bad weather. Only rainy season. That's it. We have rainy season, very, very hot day, and normal hot day. <laughs> yeah. Things like this. Yeah. And the things that I found out as well, um, like, like you say, I found uh, poor people are more generous than rich people yeah. because they used to have not have anything they used to they know the feeling of when you don't have anything so they always give and um when i come back to thailand as well i i see many uh uh poor middle class very rich class and yeah i found out you don't need to have so much money to be happy yeah you understand the and, value of things yeah. better when you have less. Exactly. And I, I enjoy it. Uh, yeah. But I have time, enough money, and that's all. Like, didn't even have time and have so much money. You have lots of money for what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so wow, true. what you say is really correct. Yeah. Um, also, you're an international opera singer, correct? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so... How did that come about? What got you into opera? Wow. Um, You're one of the top from... opera singers in Thailand. That's right, yeah? Yeah. It's yeah. because it's not a lot of opera singers. No, 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 no. We leave that bit out. That's not important. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, we, this is your culture. This is the European uh, culture. And only people that... that uh, uh, born in, in Europe or people that come from royal family or they are very very rich got to see opera or people like me that have a lucky opportunity to know opera so I was um, I'm, I'm from like very uh, small town uh, quite poor and I um, one day the teacher teaching English and then, oh, everybody, today I'm going to teach you all how to sing uh, Yesterday Once More by uh, the, carpen the Carpenter. And then everybody all oh, starting to learn. And then, oh, we're going to do a singing contest, singing English song. And I and I sing this song and I accidentally got the first prize of the school. And then one day the school said, oh, we want to do um, like... Um, some American festival or something that have some foreigner come to our school and we're gonna have some orchestra. And they're asking me to sing Amazing Grace because I want something. So they're like, oh, she might can sing something well and she can yeah, speak maybe she a little bit of English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe she can sing something. So they asking me to sing Amazing Grace. And then I've been practicing like amazing, great, like things like very pop. And then the orchestra playing in very high key. It's like, oh, I can't sing. It's too high. And the teacher said, organ, can you just sing like, like, woo, 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 like this? You have to sing this key, even though you have to woo, woo, woo like that. So like, oh, what is woo? So I have to try to sing like amazing, great. And it just come out without me knowing wow. that is opera. I don't even know what is that. 
but because I have to sing this song with the orchestra in the high key, so I just sing kind of classical way without knowing anything. And then this French teacher came to watch and she just walked past actually uh, the school while I'm singing and she just she's an opera singer like teaching opera and classical in, in France and then she says oh Thailand have some Thai kid can sing opera but even though it's not good but it's still like interesting like somebody can sing so she come into the school and said who is singing and she come to talk with me and then she said I want to give you a scholarship to come to study in France to be a classical singer and it was like I didn't really fully understand English what she say but we but she keep she gave me the email and we talk through email and then yeah she gave me the scholarship to study in France so the first time I arrive uh, I can speak I can learn French a little bit English is not well and then they I start to learn um, a classical a little bit and then so yeah it's say- from there would you say um, singing helped you learn other languages as well, like English? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, Interesting. So when I learned uh, yesterday once more, I don't even know. Uh, I, I just only, hello, how are you? My name is Oregon. Uh, thank you, teacher. Goodbye. See you again tomorrow. That's all I know. But <laughs> yesterday once more. But you know all the lyrics, right? Yeah, I know you all the lyrics. You just didn't know what they mean. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. For example, uh, when I'm singing like uh, sh- chandelier, I'm saying it correct from Sia. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it, even sometimes I don't even know what it means. So I sing chandelier. I want to swing from the chandelier. So I'm like, what is chandelier? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's chandelier. Yeah, because yeah. words sound weird things. when you do it in opera sometimes. Like, they're very uh, drawn out. Some words are very drawn out. Um, I yeah. noticed, like, like how you pronounce that then. Um, that's not how you would normally say the word. <laughs> yeah, I know. But Must when I think, I was trying to... Yeah, very confusing. And it's, it's something like that. I learned without knowing what does that mean. And I learned English by singing song. And then, oh, yesterday mean mean yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to ask you back to Glenn. When you go to Philippines, uh, how do you feel? What's the difference between like like Asia and 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 Banga? Um, oh, everyone was nice to me. That was nice. That was good. Um, <laughs> it was like I was the only white guy there, so it was like wow, Americano. They they think I'm American, right? And uh, <laughs> they're always they're inviting me in the houses, like asking me, you know, come around for food and coffee and all this, showing me everything. Um, you know, everyone's so friendly. So I don't know if I how true a representation I got of the culture there because everyone was so like overwhelmingly nice to me. Um, but I got the impression it was a sort of community there. Um, at least in the the small village where I stayed, where, you know, it's like everyone had each other's back. There was a big, strong feeling of community and family, which we don't really have as much of over here. You know, families are quite spread out over here. You know, like like most of my family live in England. I live in Wales. It's a different country. You know, <laughs> we don't see each other that much. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, it's very different. And um, I, I think there's a lot we could sort of learn from h- how they still live over there. Yeah, and, and the one scenery. thing is found. Yeah, the scenery as well, amazing. The scenery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw your picture. So when you when the picture that you post, like you are very like like an aura from you. <laughs> you're very white from all the yeah. people you're taking a picture. <laughs> and um, I found Philippine people have have like beautiful sweet eyes. Do you notice that? Yeah. Yeah. Big friendly yeah, faces. Have- Big friendly faces. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah, big friendly face, and they have they have extra water in their eyes. That's what I found when I go to Philippines. Everybody has such a beautiful, sweet, watery eyes. I don't know how to explain, but this is one watery. thing that I found when it's <laughs> watery. Yeah, what do it's you mean? like like they're crying. Like, it's not crying, but very moisture and it's sweet. 
the ice is warm and sweet. I don't know how to explain. Yeah, I, but I, all I, in this I, I country see what you mean, I yeah. found. Yeah. yeah, they have like a sort of warmth, and yeah. warm. Yeah. This yeah. country, most of people are warm eyes. I don't know how to explain. And um very lovely. I also love there. Uh, I went to Manila. Oh Manila, yeah, yeah. We stopped there. Yeah. Um we got a connecting flight from there to um the village we stayed in. Um yeah, I need Which to do a city that you've been. Uh, we went to Manila, uh not for long, and then to uh Gen Gen San, General Santos is in like the south, and that was the closest oh. one then uh to where we were staying. Um yeah, oh. amazing place though. Um and I'd love at some point to to do more places in Asia like Thailand, for example. I watched a film recently called The Beach with uh Leonardo DiCaprio. Have you seen it? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. It's in Pee Pee Island. That's set yeah. There. yeah, that's set there. And it's like, wow, I wanna I wanna go to, I wanna go to that. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. There? Please come. You have, I, 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 my house is at the border of Bangkok, so we have a guest oh. room. So feel free get me when in there. you come get me to in Thailand. There. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, get them here. Let's yes. go to trouble. 100%. Let's do that. Yeah. Let yeah, me know. Deal. That's, that's happening. <laughs> yeah. <I appreciate laughs> that. Um, yeah. Just to bring it back to, um, you know, your job. You're a voice. You're a voice coach, right? Is that how you describe it? Yes. Or voice doctor? Because you're you're a doctor uh, in vocals, right? Yeah. I'm a, how do you uh, become that? Okay, I did my PhD in half performance and half research. So I'm okay. I'm both I'm both both performer and both academy academic. Like I have uh, two careers in the same time. Yeah, I'm doctor of both as well. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm teaching singing how to sing especially on classical and um of course i do some research as well uh, about singing stuff yeah and a vocal cord of course like like, like students come in singing or, or professional singer come in and sing for me and and like oh i'm starting to hurt my throat can you help me what did i do wrong or oh after they sing i told them um what's wrong uh, or do they need more? Sorry. Do they need more like support? Do you need more? Uh, exercise. Which exercise they have to do more to become a better singer? Yeah. What kind of exercises like would it. you get people to do? Oh, things like, for example, hmm, uh, breathe in. The, the the most basic is breathe in. Your belly get bigger. Breathe out, your belly is going and your shoulder go, not go up. Lots of people breathe like this, <gasps> like that, which is wrong. I think you know because I just, I just did doing... that. <laughs> yeah. oh, don't do that. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like kind of yoga. Don't yeah. breathe. Don't, don't, don't um, make sure that your shoulder not go up <gasps> like that or <gasps> like that. It's always go deep in your belly. This is very important exercise. And, and um, actually, if you breathe like that, it's actually breathe only the up here. That's why it's go up and your belly is going um, Goes in, smaller right? because yeah, yeah that, that is wrong. It should be deep and your belly should be get bigger like that. Yeah, this is a um, very important exercise that everybody have to make sure that they do it correctly. So does that give you sort of power in your voice? The breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Singing the most, uh, the things that produce, of course, you need to breathe in so your air up, so you can vibrate your vocal cord as well. Okay. You need to have air. So the breathing is very, very important. And if you can't, if you cannot, uh, if you don't have a big breath, then you cannot be a very good singer. But if you have good breath, Hmm. you can be a very good singer because I've, I've heard you like, hold notes for like a long time <laughs> yeah i uh, like to long, swim as well how long can you like hold a note for oh depends um if someday i can i have a good food i rest well i used to hold longer than like one minute really what what the yeah, same note for one, one minute, minute. Jeez. Yeah, I don't think I could even breathe out do... for one minute. <laughs> oh. 
I used to do over one minute or you can just like that more than one minute okay like like okay. now if, 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 is it getting late already or I'm getting tired I probably probably do about 40 or 45 seconds right. yeah oh wow but if you want to be a, a singer you should be at least doing or so, uh, at least 30 seconds so if you want to be a classical singer. say someone like me right I can't sing I'm gonna admit that um, but say I wanted to get into opera singing or even the basic, the most basic level of singing, what kind of like exercises could I do or kind of maybe vocal exercises could I do to help prepare my voice so that I could sing in like the correct note? The correct note? To, you mean the... Ideally, the, yeah. Sing, yeah, okay. For to training you to have a good ear and singing correct notes, it's like... You have to, when I was young, I was like, do, do, keep it do, and then do, keep it fine to find do, and I finally become a, a, a perfect peach do when I was young, but now I'm not anymore. But the more you sing, the more you get familiar and trying to think like that notes have a life, that notes have color. Lots of sing, lots lots of students come in and when they sing, oh, sing do, they always sing do, do, do. It's like there are no life, there are no yeah. color. They just want to sing do <laughs> like that. <laughs> or, 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 or or if it's like do, yeah. sometimes they sing do do. You always mm. have to think they have a color do, do, do re mi. Yeah, Not do me, do yeah. me, like that. Yeah, I yeah. definitely prefer the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, I, I always teach my student every notes have colors. Every notes have life. Bring it to life. Don't just sing, uh, for example, do a deer, a female deer, like that. Do a deer, a female deer, ray. You have to bring it up. Yeah, I yeah, guess it's almost like I mean. um, you could you could draw some comparisons there to sort of theatrics and acting because at the end of the day, you, you're performing and you have to convince people of the emotion of the lyrics you're singing as well. So if you're singing in some sort of flat tone, it is going to be less relatable to whoever's listening, right? Yeah. Acting also very important. That Actually, that I'm where I teach now a lot, I got many uh, Chinese students and they are, have amazing voice, beautiful. When they sing, it's amazing. But but sometimes they forgot how to acting, how to sing with emotional. Yeah, yeah. this is also thing that I'm trying to build up my student and they are getting much better. And, and when amazing voice with good acting, they are the best singer. Yeah. And they also some singer are so good at acting, but not good at singing. Also, doesn't sound good. You need to have everything to be a good performer. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, well, we're on the topic of uh, voice. Are we going to see any more yeah. um, of your British accent series on YouTube? <laughs> Hope I have time to do it. But um, like recently when I when I talk with my husband or when I talk with my friend, they were like, "Organ, you now, why you talk like you sound really British?" I, I want like, to really hear you and him do British? an episode. I want to hear you and uh, your partner now do an episode. Your husband, sorry, do an episode of that. I think that'd be good. Yeah, we want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun. But he, his accent is like from Cod. He's from Cardiff, so his accent very. It's like Cardi. Very different to mine, isn't it? Yeah, different from you as well. So so I, I talked to him like, oh, I'm going to talk with Glenn today. I'm afraid that I couldn't understand him because I didn't speak with you for a while. And maybe I'm not used to your accent, but but I but I can understand you every every word. I'm glad. Oh, good. That's good. That would This would have yeah. been a tough podcast if you couldn't understand anything I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe because of that video, me and you did uh where you uh analyzed my accent back in the day uh that's helped you <laughs> yeah i really like your accent it sounds back in the day i don't know how to do it but it sounds really cool <laughs> yeah. um yeah 
final question for you, Organ. We've not got much time left. Um, I just want to know, and I think everyone who follows you on Instagram would want to know, what's with the hair colours? Why do you change your hair to such crazy colours all the time? And why does it suit you every time? <laughs> Whoa, thank you so much that you say this suit me. Um, Last time I saw you, I... it was bright pink. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then... And then... <laughs> Why the colors? Yeah, it What's with the colors? And then, and then when I come back to Thailand, it's become green and blue, and then I do red and orange. Now back to red, and um, yeah, I love doing many hair colors. It's why, as I told you, I'm, it's bring me to life. You know, I I like my life to have lots of colors. I don't like to be plain and sometimes if if someday I don't have a good mood when but when I look at myself in the mirror and makeup and then I look at myself and it's with the red color I'm like oh, I look yeah, like a mermaid yeah. I'm gonna be <laughs> look at this stuff isn't it it's 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 bring me um to to life you know and um I like it when I go to travel somewhere and then uh people recognize me from my red hair like in Thailand, it's very, not a lot of people doing hair color. All my teacher, uh, all my friends, all my teacher, all my students know, oh, that red hair there is teacher organ. They know right away that's me. Or people that I never met for 10 years when I have saw red hair, oh, that's organ, you know? And um, when you travel, um, for example, when you go somewhere that have lots of stealing stuff, um, only me. I never get any one trying to steal or pickpocket me because my red hair are very like stand out. People looking, and yeah, I'm yeah. quite loud. Yeah. So <laughs> everywhere I go, ah, you wow, I love this place. So of course the pickpocket, uh, the, the the guy who's stealing stuff, they afraid to come near me. Yeah, too when much people, attention, yeah. isn't it? Too much attention. Yeah, too much attention. That's yeah. why it's it's really good for travel when you have red hair. You people always spot you, and um, people always afraid to steal in your stuff, and um, it's bring you to life. And I I I and get I get bored so easy. So I like to change my hair color every every like six months. <laughs> let's say six months yeah well that's all we've got time for today organ i wish you had more time i feel like we could chat for a while <laughs> um, yeah. yeah i feel like this has been a really good episode um but we're gonna have to leave it there yeah thanks again for coming on i know it's late there but yeah thanks a lot goodbye thanks a lot for having me too bye bye <laughs>